Well, hello, garden friends. I'm Christy with GreenLivingOffGrid.com, and today we're going to be planting the tomatoes that I've started indoors in this hydroponic grow box. I have tomatoes that I've started from seed and have been growing in a cracky hydroponic tub with uh, some nutrients in water. And we're going to be planting these tomatoes into our deep water culture system in the greenhouse. I will show you how that works. But right now, let me tell you a little bit about the plants that I have in here. I have, these are cherry tomatoes that I started from seed. And right here in this little aerated coffee cup, deep water culture reserve, I have a tomato, a cherry tomato, but this is a sun sugar cherry tomato plant that I started. I rooted off some plants that I have in the greenhouse right now. Those plants I bought earlier this year from the store. And I cut the, the little stems from those plants and started these, cloned these in an aerated reserve and stuck them in these coffee pots. So this one is ready to go out. I have a few others that are not quite ready. So I'm just going to plant that one. This is again the sun sugar cherry tomato. And then all the rest of these that we're going to be planting today are the cherry tomatoes. The husky cherry tomatoes that I started from seed. You may be wondering how I get my tomato plants into these net pots. What I do is first of all I take three inch net pots because tomatoes get really large so I really like the three inch net pots for to growing tomatoes and I don't know if you can see here but in the bottom I have a hole and the reason I put a hole in is the tomatoes develop quite a massive root system and it's hard to get those roots out at the end of the year and net pots can be reused every year so I usually put a little hole in the bottom of my net pot and when I start my plants from seed or if I'm cloning them or even when I take them out of a little dirt pot um, when I buy them at the garden, I put all of my tomatoes in a Rockwell cube just to kind of hold them in place and of course wedge that little one inch Rockwell cube into that little hole that I have at the bottom of my net pot and that just kind of it helps to stabilize the plant and then of course I put the hydro tin around my plant. That's the uh, clay pellets that you see there, those round clay balls, they're called hydro tin. Put those around the uh, rockwell cube, the little square one inch rockwell cube. And even though, you know, the roots obviously grow out the side of the hydro tin as well, you will find though by the end of summer there's a massive root base on the bottom of these things. and I really did fight with them quite a bit one year. I didn't have that hole in the bottom of my net pots. and So ever since then I've put that hole in and it really does help to remove those plants at the end of the season. So just a little word about how I plant my tomatoes into my rockwell cubes and net pots with hydro tin to support them. And now uh, let's go ahead and uh, get these guys planted in the greenhouse deep water culture bins. Now before I do, I am going to show you how my deep water culture hydroponic system is set up in the greenhouse. Right now I've got the, uh, the plants that I started this stem from growing in the aquaponic system in the greenhouse and then we're going to transfer that over to the hydroponics bins in the upper shelf. So let's check that out. Well here I am out in the greenhouse Tomato plants have been sitting here in my aquaponics system. As the temperatures have been a little bit cold out here, I've had to keep them here in the lower trays because they're right above the fish tank and so I'm able to keep the water temperatures a little bit warmer when it's been in the low 30s. But um, these tomatoes are growing and they're running a little bit out of nutrients. We, the fish that I have in here are just some goldfish in the aquaponic system and there's just not enough fish load to be able to give these guys all the 
all the nutrients that they need. So I'm getting a little bit of yellowing here on the leaves up here at the base of the plants which is a sign that it's time to get these guys in the hydroponic bins where I can put more nutrients than what the fish can provide in the fish water. Well, I currently have up here you can see in my upper shelving unit I've got these bins and right now they're filling. Okay, here you get a little better view. Right now I'm running water from the fish tank through the, the little PVC pipe I have up above. On top of the bins I have a 19 gallon the 19 gallon modular stacker bins. Up here I drilled some 3 inch net pot holes. I cut off the little legs on the tomato cages and just set them down on top of the bins with little rubber feet. And that just provides the support needed for my tomatoes as they grow up. I fill the bins with fish water and then I add my tomato nutrients, hydroponic nutrients to kind of give them a little bit more uh, of the, uh, the different components that they need to grow well. And even though I have three holes in here, this middle hole is just kind of like an access hole. I just keep, usually I keep a net pot in there, but I don't have any plants in that. I only grow two tomatoes per bin because the roots get so large and and uh, fill out the bin actually over the course of the summer. And then of course the tomatoes need a lot of room to be able to spread out and grow. So two is the most that I would ever recommend. I did try three one year and it was just too much so I just leave that middle hole as an access hole um, just to kind of make it easier to put nutrients in and whatever over the course of the summer. So anyway I fill um, these bins about half full of water. I've got this one open right now and in the back I have auxiliary bins for extra water because on this side of the greenhouse it's the sunniest side and, and I get so much sun in here these guys on this side of the greenhouse drink more water than the ones on the other side of the greenhouse so I pretty much just um, keep these two little they see the tub there in the back and this one here to give them extra water in between my uh, the times that I fill the tubs something to know tomatoes will actually go through about a gallon of water a day in the heat of the summer when they get really large so you have to watch the water in these bins. The other thing to also note, the shelving units in this greenhouse can only support 500 pounds. And since water weighs eight pounds per gallon, I only fill these about 15 gallons full at a time. And each one has 15 gallons. And then of course I have the two auxiliary tubs that are seven gallon tubs. So. That puts me up about almost 420 pounds in weight when I have everything full, you know, half full of water, three quarter full of water. And then when I add the weight of the tomato plants and of course my electronics, which are underneath the bins here, they're protected by those little dish pans to keep any water from dripping on them, which happens sometimes here in the greenhouse. So all my electronics are behind those bins under the, uh, the dish tubs. Anyway, um, with all that weight, you know, I'm, I'm getting pretty close to the maximum weight that is permissible in, uh, in the greenhouse shoving units. So, anyway, I'm going to show you how this thing works. I'm going to go ahead and bring the lid in to this last tub here. And let me show you how I designed the lid. So, you see the three holes. And up, you know, in the lid I have the air lines that run through the lid. I go down to my grid below, which I'll just show you right here. So I did this using the, the quarter inch Soko hose lines. And of course I have the 316, um, that's the grade of stainless steel washers to hold the grid down. Like I've done on my other videos I've showed you on how to make these little aeration devices. So basically I use that 316 circle hose, I punch some extra holes in it these things to give them a little bit more aeration than what the circle hoses provide. The uh, 316 washers are actually the size is 516 but the 316 grade is a marine grade of stainless steel so you have to order that online because it's a higher grade than the 304 that's sold at the uh, Home Depot. 
But get the 516 washers to weigh it down. Use the little dig um, little uh, connectors. Bring your air line in and connect that up. You can kind of see how I designed this. And it covers the, uh, the base of the tub really well so it aerates all summer long. It gives good aeration to my deep water culture tomato bins. All right, we're gonna put this lid on top of this bin and then I'll show you what it looks like inside. Well, here I have the aerator all connected up. You can see it works pretty good, but sometimes, like over here, this is not blowing too much, too many holes out, so I'm gonna take my little staple remover and put a few more holes in, and that'll help kind of give it a nice even coverage in the reserve. So that's what I do in the summer. I, when I start it up, I just kind of check the units. They do, as you can see, get a little bit of clogged over time. You can see the hydroponic nutrients kind of get inside these things. And so you'll want to put some extra holes every year just to make sure it's not getting too clogged and you have still some really good aeration in the bin. Now that I have the aeration where I want it, I put my plants in. I'm filling the water a little bit more to get the water level up to where the roots, these are those um, ones that are just coming out of the net pot, I'll probably go about two, three inches down from the bottom of the net pot. So I cover those roots real good. And I'm gonna go ahead and add some nutrients into the bin. Let me show you what I use for tomato nutrients. Here I have two different kinds of tomato fertilizers. This one that's 41838 is the fertilizer that you typically find. Um, it's Master Blend's formula, 41838, and that four indicates that it has a low nitrogen count. That's what you need when you want your plants when they're flowering to produce uh, fruit and not put so much energy into the growth, you want to use the 41838. But here with my small tomato plants, I want them to grow a little bit more. I'm going to use this Urban Hydroponic 201838 formula. That 20 indicates that it's got uh, the calcium nitrate um, count that you want to support the green growth. So with these smaller tomato plants, I'm going to be using this one for a month or two and then once they get nice and big and I want them to focus on buds and producing fruit then I'm going to switch over to this tomato fertilizer the 41838 so that's what I use for tomato fertilizer I use this uh, in conjunction with my fish water that I always fill the tubs with every week and typically I can get by with my plants with only putting this tomato fertilizer in the bins once a month and and I feel refill the water levels with the fish water in between. So that helps with the cost of fertilizer when I'm using the fish water to kind of supplement. And um, then I just put the dose amount that I need of the tomato formula once a month. And my plants do really well with that. I don't know if you can see this, but this is a two tablespoon measuring cup. I like to use this because I can with a tea, add a teaspoon per gallon, you need at least 15 teaspoons. So with two tablespoons, that makes six teaspoons each time. And uh, so that only needs two to three scoops of this, with this uh, scoop to be able to dose up my, my trays with 15 to 18 gallons of water. I'm actually probably gonna do about two and a half of these, be about right. So that's the that's what I use to dose my plants. All right, so I just mix it all up, stir it up in the bottom in the bin. It just helps to ensure we have good consistency. Of the nutrients spread throughout the bin. Well here I have my tomato plants all planted and something that I use to tell the water level is this little wooden dowel. What I do is I stick that in the hole where I put my hose in. Right there. Just kind of work it down inside. Put it down to the bottom and then I lift it up and I can easily tell where my water level is on my bin. 
don't know if you can see this, so I set this down at the bottom, and there, you can see my water level is right where I want it, just it's two or three inches down from where the net pot would fall on the lid. There's the water level. That's where I like to keep these things so they're not too full for the shelving weight limit, but at the same time they provide enough water for my plants in the aerated bin for the roots to grow well. So that's my little trick. Use these little wooden dowels and you can check your water level at any time. And whenever you are growing tomatoes in a hydroponic setup like this, because it's not getting all the breezes from outside and the insects and everything to pollinate these flowers, all you have to do is just kind of shake them a little bit and that helps them self-pollinate. I do that once a day and as you can see here I have some tomatoes that are starting on these plants. So this little this little system here in the greenhouse is doing really well. Just come out and, and shake the little flowers and pretty soon we're going to have some cherry tomatoes. Thanks for watching. As always, don't forget to check us out at greenlivingoffgrid.com and like and subscribe.